Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State Tech, and I wanted to talk about how the ECG feature on my Apple Watch actually provided information that led to me going to the emergency room and getting checked out. So uh, let me talk real briefly about why I'm making this video before I get into the story. Uh, the reason that I decided to put this video out is because there is a lot of content coming out from doctors and news organizations and stuff like that saying that perhaps this is a feature that shouldn't be in the hands of regular users like us because it provides health data that should be you know, used and analyzed only by trained physicians, which there's a little bit of truth in that. And you really have to look at yourself uh, and, and, and how you deal with that type of information. Um, so I totally understand from a doctor's perspective that a bunch of people running around with ECGs, every time their heart blips a little weird, they're going to feel like they're dying and they're going to go to the ER or they're going to uh, clog up their doctor's waiting room uh, over something that's not a, not an issue at all because our hearts are very reactive to everything that's going on and a skipped beat or a little bit of weirdness here or there is really nothing to worry about. But uh, there are instances where things arise and uh, and those do need to be looked into. Now the Apple Watch's ECG really is only designed to uh, determine whether or not you're in atrial fibrillation or AFib, which I my mother actually suffers from AFib. She was born with a, uh, a heart defect, which was corrected with surgery, but now many, many years, years later, uh, in her senior years, she's having some AFib issues. And so an Apple Watch would be, she'd be a perfect candidate for something like that because her watch would be able to uh, determined that she was in AFib early on before she started to feel the effects of having been in AFib for an extended period of time. But that's kind of the gist of what the Apple Watch ECG was designed to do. Now, for people like me who don't have AFib, uh, who typically have a normal sinus rhythm, I don't necessarily need to worry about that, but I've always been interested in it for some odd reason. Um, I bought the, uh, the Withings uh, blood pressure cuff because it's just neat to have that information and to be able to check that. And I like to check it, you know, uh, and see what my resting is. And I like to check it and see what it is like after I've gone for a run or whatnot. It's just interesting to have that information. I don't look at little differences and think like, ooh, what if that's a thing? And then I go down that rabbit hole, uh, wasting my own time, stressing myself out for no reason, and wasting a, a doctor's time or something like that. Um, it's, it's purely information for me. And if it was a huge red flag, I would act on it. But just basic little things uh, are not uh, issues for me. I'm not going to go and, and go down that rabbit hole uh, because I have a basic understanding of the heart, not a very good one. But I have read up enough on it to know that there are variations, there are changes, our heart rate and, and the consistency of it is completely different. It's different now when I'm talking than when I'm sitting not talking and just breathing normally. Um, things are completely different. So let me talk a little bit about what happened. So last month in December of 2018, uh, I got sick. And I started out the month with a cough and just, you know, congestion that turned into feeling like I had the flu, but then it went away. I still had the cough and the congestion, but then it came back and hit me hard. And I was just out. I didn't have any energy. I felt like garbage. I just did not feel good at all. Uh, I had, you know, sweats. I felt just, I totally felt off. Something was wrong. Most people would chalk that up to, well, I probably have the flu, so I'm going to drink some fluids. I'm going to try and sleep and relax and, and just, you know, that's it. Well, that was my plan until one night I was laying there in bed. My heart rate did not feel right in my chest. It did not feel right. It, my heart was not beating in the normal rhythm that I, you know, just in, you know, you even just feel your heart beat in your chest. And uh, if you've done that before, you probably know kind of what it feels like. Mine was not like that. It was something was weird with it. 
it was consistent. It just something was weird with it. And I know that uh, there are different heart arrhythmias that you can get that are temporarily uh, happening. They're very benign, which means they're not any, there's no long term risks. There's no, you know, really risks associated with it. But because I had had my Apple Watch, of course, I've used the ECG feature before, so I've and I've used it multiple times just to see because it's data. Like I said before, it's just data and information. Uh, but I felt off, and so when I checked my ECG, I could see it in the ECG the difference. Now I don't know completely how to read an ECG. I've looked it up. I understand, you know, what each thing. Uh, says and and what the term is for it, but I don't necessarily understand what that means in regards to uh, heart disease or overall disease in the body or anything like that. So I'm not a physician. I don't. I'm not putting this information out there uh, as if I know even remotely enough about to talk about it like that. But for me, I was able to see in my ECG on the watch that my heart rate. Uh, that that my heart rhythm was way off from where it normally was. So feeling as bad as I did, not having the strength to really get out of bed when I did actually sit up because I was after doing that ECG, I thought, well, I'm going to go and get my Withings blood pressure cuff because I want to see what my blood pressure is. I sat up and I felt like I was going to pass out. And so at that point, I really knew that there was something going on, that there was some sort of an issue. Uh, and so I had my wife take me to the ER. I ended up needing uh, a, a bag of fluid put through me, which definitely helped. Uh, despite the fact that I was really hydrating myself, I guess maybe I wasn't hydrating myself enough. Um, so the bag of fluid helped. They swabbed my nose and whatnot, and I, I tested for influenza. So obviously I had a major virus going on or bug or whatever going on. And so my body was fighting that. And so that's why everything was off kilter. Um, they actually did a 12 lead ECG or EKG on me, uh, electrocardiogram. And so I was able to look at that. I did briefly talk to the doctor and told the doctor how I used the ECG app on my watch. And he was, you know, he's like most other doctors was kind of like, oh, great, more information that patients have like the WebMD, you know, I've got the sniffles, you go to WebMD and you probably have cancer or something like that. People get, uh, people become hypochondriacs over having too much medical information. And I truly do believe that for a lot of people, a lot of people who have the tendency to maybe be a hypochondriac over something small, uh, you know, are looking for something. Me, on the other hand, I'm just interested in the information and the data. And by having baselines in that information and that data, I'm able to better uh, understand my health when I have an actual problem. And my and and when they did that 12 lead uh, EKG on me. The same, you know, he stated, the doctor, that there was an irregular irregular rhythm with my heart rate. Something was going on, but it was benign. It was something that would likely, within a few more hours, return to normal. And so for me, uh, I actually found the ECG feature in my watch useful, and I explained to the doctor, like, look, I'm, I'm more into the data. I like it just because um, I'm not going to turn into a hypochondriac over it, but in this instance the data showed me that I did have a problem. The Apple Watch wouldn't even tell me that I had a normal sinus rhythm. It would say inconsistent, and it gave me that report back, which it's very easy to trigger that inconsistent rhythm. But if you know what you're looking at because you've ran that EKG before or that ECG on your watch, you know what your normal rhythm looks like, you can really tell when things are haywire. And if you feel haywire like I did, almost passing out on the floor, can't even get out of bed, feeling sick, the sweats, all that stuff, that feeling like that combined with knowing that my heart was out of whack, I knew that I needed to go and get checked out at least. And it was a very good idea that I did go to the hospital because I needed that bag of fluids. When your body is low on electrolytes and all that stuff, everything else is going to be off kilter in your body. And so thankfully, it wasn't a big issue for me, but I did find the Apple Watch ECG fe feature useful. And so for those people out there, especially people on the news who want to write a report and put up a video 
uh, you know, saying that, you know, it's probably something that the average person doesn't need, like we're a bunch of idiots that shouldn't have this type of information. I'm here to say like, yes, there probably are some idiots out there that shouldn't have that information because they're most likely to be a hypochondriac over nothing. Whereas there's people like me and I know most of you because you're watching a YouTube channel like this that just like to have the data that are not going to go sideways over some little weird blip, but like to have that information because you like to be informed. And that's exactly where I'm at. And it's exactly why I'm making this video. So let me know what your thoughts down are down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinions. If you've been waiting or on the fence about buying an Apple Watch, I've got a link down in the description below to Amazon and B&H Photo. You can buy it from either of those places and that helps support uh, my channel here on YouTube. It helps uh, keep us doing videos and all that good stuff. Um, so let me know what you think. I would love to hear your input and uh, maybe if you've used the ECG app, uh, your findings on it, your thoughts on it. Share that with me down below. Click on that subscribe button. I've got a lot of other Apple Watch videos that I just put out because I really wanted to, uh, I get the question a lot because I have an Apple Watch. Like, how do you use it? What are some of the things that you do with it? And so I've put out those videos. I found them to be uh, useful and I think that you'll find them useful. So make sure to subscribe so you can get access to those videos. Until next time, take care.